Hello everyone, welcome to another session for Know Your Exam series from Shomus Biology. And in this all session of videos, we are going to talk about different exams which are important for your career. And we are talking about the exams date and obviously other important information regarding the exam with the exam pattern. As well as at the end, I always provide exam preparation tips. So stay tuned and watch the video. <laughs> Welcome to another video session with Suman Bhattacharji regarding know your exam and uh, as we all know that uh, knowing your exam is really important the exam pattern and the date of the exam and type of question paper is very very important to qualify an exam so in this uh, video we are going to talk about the JNU entrance examination this is uh, again another MSc qualifier examination that is conducted by JNU The JNU exam for MSc entrances or MSc level courses is conducted by JNU that is Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi uh, and usually the exam is conducted at May, May the month of May every year and this exam is ex exactly conducted for uh, offering the courses like MSc, MPhil and PhD in JNU itself. Okay. So this, this is really prestigious because you know JNU is one of the most important prestigious universities in India uh, to do a lot of higher studies like MSc, Master's level study, MSc, MA as well. But as we are making this video mostly uh, targeting the life science audience, so I'm telling you like MSc, MPhil, PhD, all these degrees are conducted under JNU itself. And JNU itself is not only the, uh, the place where you can do all this work but also other colleges uh, under JNU conduct the same process. So they actually take the same exam, JNU entrance examination or no, known as JNU EE uh, and the marks from JNU EE is taken for consideration regarding admission to all the colleges under JNU in that scheme. The eligibility criteria for JNU entrance examination for especially for MSc you can say bachelor's degree with 55% marks in both 10 plus 2 as well as plus 3 so that means during your plus 2 level you need to have more than 55 percent marks as well as in your graduation you need to have more than 55 percent mark to apply for this exam okay uh, and for mphil exam uh, for mphil preparation it's 55 percent marks during your master's course and for phd program you need to have uh, uh, 55 percent minimum marks during your master's degree as well as uh, you need to have a national level entrance examination certificate that is uh, CSI UGC net uh, or get qualification or get rank uh, for applying for this course. But for MPhil you don't need uh, the CSI net or get score. The exam structure for JNU entrance examination is different for different types of entrances that you take. Because you know there are MSc exam and there is an entrance exam for uh, MPhil or PhD. So for an MSc exam, uh, there will be total marks of 240 marks questions will be there. And you have 3 hours to complete. And that whole 240 marks uh, of the question is divided into two different part, part A and part B. Both are MCQ type questions obviously. But part A contains 60 questions, all are compulsory and part B contain 100 questions and you need to answer 60 out of the 100. So it, it, it says like uh, for every 60 questions in part A, this, there are 1 marks for each question, so 60 marks. And in part B, 60 more questions, 3 marks each, so 180 marks. All total of 240 marks questions and you need to complete it in uh, 3 hours. And for every 1 marks question, there is a negative marking of 25%, that is 1 out of 4. But for every 3 marks question, the negative marking is 1 out of Okay, that's the marking scheme for MSc entrance. But for MPhil and PhD entrance is little different. The total marks is only 70 and the time is 3 hours. And it's also divided into two different parts A and B. In this case part A contains 30 questions, all are compulsory. As well as part B contains 40 questions, all are compulsory. And all the questions here are of 1 marks. But you'll have 3 hours to answer them. Although the questions are one marks question, don't fall into the trap of one marks question will be little less. All the questions are trickier and it requires uh, you to think a lot 
and find out some numerical formulas to answer few of the questions. That's why they give three hours for 70 marks question. Okay. And the negative marking for MPhil and uh, PhD because all the questions are of one marks, it's 50% negative marking. So that's a very important determinant uh, for qualifying the entrance of MPhil and a PhD in JNU. So 50% negative marking. So for a correct answer, you'll get one for a negative marking. It's fa uh, half or 0.5. cutoff we can't say much about this JNU cutoff because you know this exam is not uh, like based on the cutoff because it's always depending upon the number of seats available because JNU is not only exactly you know there are a few seats available in JNU itself for conducting MPhil and PhD but for other MSc studies you might be uh, transferred to different colleges under JNU so it depends on the total number of seats available for all these colleges but uh, the number of seats is moderate like it's not very less but it's it's like quite enough uh, for the individual uh, to get the same facilities that they provide there what we can say is uh, the number of seats can be for msc approximately uh, 45 to 50 and for mphil phd candidate is approximately uh, like 20 to 25 maximum that's the number of seats available uh, but the cutoff procedure, how exactly they do the cutoff procedure, it depends on uh, the total number of seats available in a particular year. Because you know, the same number of seats may not be available every single year. So the cutoff procedure, most of the time, they, they follow three things together. First thing is uh, the, the exam itself. So they take account the marks of the exam itself. Along with that, they also look at your track record. That means how much you, you score during your plus two and the bachelor's. That is another very, very important consideration. So all these things combined together, uh, they check as a uh, cutoff and they, they prepare cutoff based on the total marks that, are, that a person is getting. That's how they finally put the merit list because, you know, they have several different lists. They put three separate lists uh, after the written test, first list, second list, third list. So uh, they put it based on a merit uh, basis. Difficulty. Difficulty of JNU exam is, it is like uh, for the MSc entrance, it's moderately difficult and for PhD and MPhil exam, it is difficult because of the limited seats. It's only 20 seats, 20 to 25 seats. So yes, the competition is high. That is the reason that uh, as most of the people are applying for uh, JNU and the seats are limited, the competition is really difficult. It's really tough. Uh, so yeah, that is that is one, one problem. But for MSc is also, it's, it's a little moderate, but PhD and MPhil is really difficult. Exam fees uh, for uh, MSc, PhD, and PhD, all those things are kind of uh, scattered here. But generally for a general candidate, including OBC, uh, if you choose any one subject to apply during the MSc entrance examination, the charge is 220. Uh, if someone chooses two subjects, then it will be 430. And if you choose three subjects, it will be 600. For SCST, BPL, uh, PWD category, it's half of what is for the general. So it's 110 for one subject, uh, 215 for two subjects, and 300 for three subjects separately. And these charges are the examination charges. So apart from that, there are bank transaction charges required during submission of the form, including the form, that is also 200 extra. So what about the final tips uh, regarding the preparation for JNU entrance examination? Uh, what I can say is JNU entrance examination is moderately difficult to high difficult range. But the question asked during the entrance examination for the MSc in life sciences subjects in JNU, uh, they mostly ask question which is fully analytical and numerical questions are also there. And they also ask questions uh, from the techniques. A lot of biological techniques uh, are very, very important in terms of preparing for JNU entrance examination. That's why I recommend always, if you are aiming to go for JNU entrance examination, you should always start with one book that is Principles and Techniques of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology by John Walker. This is one of the best book and you should always have this book while you're preparing for JNU entrance examination. That's always a true thing. You always start with it. You need to have very basic and strong understanding of biochemistry, cell biology, molecular biology. These three chapters, you need to have a concrete understanding. So follow some good graduation level books for these three things. For example, for biochemistry, Leninger, Nelson and Cox. For cell biology, you can go to Lodish, which will be really good in terms of the preparation for uh, JNU entrance. And for molecular biology, you can go for uh, Watson. 
but this one book I told you principles uh, and techniques of biochemistry and molecular biology by John Walker is like like because the question pattern that uh, this book carries in the exercise at the end are the type of question that they generally ask in the JNU entrance examination so that's why it's really important another important tip uh, that I should share with you is uh, the JNU exam is difficult because the number of seats are limited so the cutoff is also very less uh, but the problem is the negative marking especially you're applying for MPhil or PhD entrance examination the cutoff is uh, very it will be very less because it's 70 marks and you have three hours to answer them and all the questions are of one marks so at this point the negative marking is 50% so every single wrong answer will deduct half uh, from your actual uh, answering so in JNU exam really there is no room for making any mistake especially for MPhil and PhD entrance for the MSc entrance it's still uh, you can uh, attain few questions uh, which you are not very much sure about but for entrance of MPhil and PhD you should not attain any question which you are not aware of uh, of the correct answer so if you know an answer for sure then only you can go and apply for it if you don't know don't attain those questions because you may think answering more questions will be helpful but actually it is a curse because answering more questions will leading to the less marks and you will not be able to qualify so keep this in your mind that the questions will be from the basics and a lot of analytical parts will be there so while you're preparing for genuine entrance examination the best idea is first check the genuine entrance questions a few two three questions and after studying the questions you know you'll know that from which angle they're asking the question so find that angle from where they're asking the question and then prepare the question as I told you that the book of John Walker they carry some exercise question especially Leninger carry some exercise question at the back of the uh, book those questions are really really analytical and those are the type of questions that they are going to ask so if you keep practicing those questions actual JNU questions will be a lot easier compared to this okay so keep this thing in your mind and continue to prepare for JNU exam so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more self-help education videos like that and obviously share this video as much as you can to the social network so that other people know about the exam before taking it